Hello anatomy students, today we're going to talk about the female sexual cycle. It consists of two smaller cycles, the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. So the ovarian cycle is going to focus on events that are happening in the ovaries while the uterine cycle is going to focus on what's happening in the uterus. There are four different hormones that are going to regulate uh, the events of both of these cycles. Um, our first hormone is FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone. It is secreted by the pituitary gland, and it is going to stimulate follicle development. Uh, so follicles are going to start off small um, as primary follicles, and then they become larger as the cycle goes on uh, to become uh, mature follicles, also known as Graafian follicles. LH is luteinizing hormone. This is also released by the pituitary gland, um, and luteinizing hormone stimulates an event called ovulation, where a secondary oocyte bursts from the follicle and then enters the uterine tube um, for fertilization, if that should happen. Estrogen is another hormone. It is released by the follicle. So as the follicle gets bigger um, throughout that ovarian cycle, um, then um, it's going to release more and more estrogen. Estrogen acts to stimulate the thickening of the uterine lining, which is known as the endometrium. Progesterone is released by a structure called the corpus luteum. Once ovulation occurs, the empty follicle that remains behind in the ovary turns into this corpus luteum. It secretes progesterone, and progesterone maintains the lining of the uterus in preparation for fertilization, implantation, and support of the developing embryo and fetus. So all of this is overseen by the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is going to do this by way of releasing hormone, in particular GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone. So when the hypothalamus releases this GnRH, then that is going to stimulate the release of FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary gland. As I mentioned, follicle-stimulating hormone stimulates the development of the follicle that surrounds the, uh, the oocyte here. And uh, you can see that as time is going on, that follicle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, due in part to uh, this collecting fluid that is um, accumulating inside of that follicle. So FSH uh, is going to produce this follicle, which produces estrogen. As the follicle gets bigger, it secretes more and more estrogen. And the estrogen is responsible for thickening the endometrial lining of the uterus. Luteinizing hormone is the hormone from the anterior pituitary that converts a ruptured follicle, one that is now void of its oocyte, into the corpus luteum. It's the corpus luteum that produces progesterone, and this is the hormone that maintains the, the uterine lining, that maintains the endometrium should um, fertilization occur we need to have a glycogen-rich environment to support that growing embryo, uh, which will then uh, become the growing fetus. All right, so let's take a look at our ovarian cycle. The ovarian cycle consists of two phases, um, the pre-ovulatory phase, so everything that leads up to ovulation, and the post-ovulatory phase, or everything uh, that happens after ovulation. Uh, these two phases have different names. Uh, the pre-ovulatory phase is also called the follicular phase, um, because that's the part where the follicle is actually growing. And then the post-ovulatory phase is also called the luteal phase, because the follicle becomes the corpus luteum 
after ovulation, and then that's where that um, term is coming from. So during the pre-ovulatory phase, as you can see in the picture, we have um, our uh, follicle or this sac of cells that surrounds a primary oocyte, and as time goes on, the follicle is growing, growing, and growing. And then once we get close to about the, the 14th day of the um, female sex cycle, the follicle reaches its full size. We call this a mature follicle. It's also called a graphian follicle. And uh, this yellow space that we have in here, this is a chamber called the antrum, and it is filled with fluid, and that's what's making the uh, follicle itself increase in size. Um, at around day 14, ovulation will occur. And the reason for this is that as this follicle is growing, 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 it's releasing more and more estrogen. And once estrogen hits its peak amount, it is going to stimulate the hypothalamus to release a burst of GnRH, and that stimulates the anterior pituitary to release a burst of luteinizing hormone. It's that LH surge or that burst of luteinizing hormone that's going to stimulate the rupture of this mature follicle and liberate our oocyte. And you can see here that now the oocyte is called a secondary oocyte because right, right before it is liberated, it's going to undergo, um, finish its first meiotic division and uh, then it's going to um, go part way into meiosis two. After ovulation occurs, we enter the post-ovulatory phase, which is also known as the luteal phase. So once the egg is ovulated, once it is released from that follicle, the egg is going to enter into the fallopian tube, and, um, and if fertilization occurs, the sperm will meet that oocyte in the fallopian tube and fertilize it. And then that's when our oocyte now becomes an ovum, a mature egg. But there's more to the story. There are more things that are happening inside of the ovary itself. This ruptured follicle is going to change into a new structure called the corpus luteum. It means yellow body. And that's why it's pictured as being yellow. This structure releases another hormone called progesterone, and progesterone acts to maintain the uterus lining. Uh, it's going to maintain the endometrium and keep it nice and thick. It's going to stimulate some glands that are found in the endometrium to secrete um, a, a glycogen-rich substance so that if fertilization does happen in that uh, uterine tube, then um, that zygote has a place to implant. It has a, a place that has lots of nutrients for it to grow. And that's the whole point of this whole cycle is to prepare the uterus to support a growing fetus. So the corpus luteum is going to secrete a lot of progesterone at first, but if fertilization doesn't happen, it's going to decrease in size. And as the corpus luteum decreases in size, the amount of progesterone that it produces is also going to decrease. Eventually, the corpus luteum turns white. Uh, the name changes. Uh, it's called the corpus albicans, uh, which means white body. And um, the amount of progesterone that it secretes uh, diminishes and then the white body, the corpus albicans, degrades. And so these graphs that I have here are showing us the interplay um, between the hormones and what's going on in uh, the various cycles. And so if we start up here at the top, uh, we're gonna have um, at the very beginning, like all of these graphs have the same uh, timeline, which is down at the bottom. So uh, the very end here is day one of the female cycle, which begins with um, menstruation. And uh, during this time, FSH uh, and, uh, and LH are 
are, are not produced very much. FSH is going to be stimulated to be released more because at this time there's low estrogen. And if you have low amounts of estrogen, that stimulates the hypothalamus to tell the anterior pituitary gland to release um, some FSH. It does that by releasing GnRH. So we have low amounts of GnRH, we have low amounts of FSH, and FSH is going to start that uh, follicle growing um, even while menstruation is occurring. Um, so uh, at number three, our follicle is growing, and that's what we can see in our picture here. The follicle is starting to grow. Um, and as that follicle is growing, again, this is also called the follicular phase as well as the preovulatory phase. As the follicle grows more and more, we get more and more estrogen that is being secreted. Um, and then right before about day 14, like we're looking at about like this dotted line here is about day 14. Um, at about here, like day maybe 12, uh, we have, um, the follicle is at its largest. We get a surge of estrogen and we're going to come all the way back up here because, um, high levels of estrogen stimulate the hypothalamus to release a lot of GnRH. And that, is going to stimulate a burst of luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary. And as you can see here, here's our luteinizing hormone, this black line. And as that climbs to its highest levels, that's when we're going to see ovulation occurring. And so now our egg goes into the uterine tube. Um, and now we have to look at what's going on hormonally inside of that ovary. Our empty follicle becomes the corpus luteum. We're entering now into the post-ovulatory phase, aka the luteal phase, and our corpus luteum is secreting progesterone and a little bit of estrogen as well. But here you can see that our estrogen is a little bit lower, our blue line, whereas our progesterone levels are much higher. The progesterone levels are needed in order to cause a thickening of the endometrial lining. However, if fertilization does not occur and implantation does not occur, our corpus luteum is going to decrease in size, our amount of progesterone and estrogen is going to fall, and uh, that is going to stimulate our hypothalamus once again to start releasing low amounts of FSH to start this cycle all over again, to start um, a new follicle growing. Um, but uh, I just wanted to make mention down here that if our progesterone levels get really low, that means that there's nothing to support this very thick endometrial lining. And so our endometrial lining is going to be um, uh, sloughed off and released from the body. And that's when we start our uh, cycle all over again at day one with menstruation. So uh, that was um, just an overview of the hormones as well as the um, ovarian cycle. Um, I'm going to stop the recording here and then pick it up again to talk about our uterine cycle.